they haven't done anything like that since so but it's going to be a tough task afternoon Feverson's won their last nine visits to the recreate and have won their last eight meetings overall that's the task for John Nigali side this afternoon it's going to be Feverson to get the game underway and Whitehaven will be attacking the railway end their favoured railway end in the first half meaning they can of course attack the Kells end in the second half it's going to be Louis Gorman to put the ball down on the kicking tee this is BBC Radio Cumbria Sports Online thank you very much for your company on this Sunday afternoon whistle of referee Ryan Cox and Gorman has got us underway it's bounced bounced and it's a firm pitch out there we haven't said that awful lot this season and Jay Carter's collected it found Ross Ainley and Ainley's the man taken down 11 or 12 metres out Newton lining weight at dummy half I'm going to come across here now to Owen McCadden I just have got, got used to looking like Slim Shady he's shaved it all off this week so that's it's take on a take some adjusting but King now finds Lachlan Hannigan who finds Rio Corkill there's a gap on this side he can get the ball out but it's Lexi to go forward with Corkill in at second row this afternoon Corkill rather than his usual centre berth Newton in a dummy half then comes to Guy Graham starting position for Guy Graham this afternoon he's fetched down just short of his own 40 Newton's going to go into the middle and find Ross Ainley he's had a new haircut as well so new haircuts all round for Whitehaven players this week it is the five and last now ever Whitehaven a five short off halfway comes right to Hannigan Hannigan's going to put the kick in it's going to be collected oh I thought he was about to say just sort of die at the last minute and uh, fell in front of Louis Gorman Gorman had to use his feet he's fetched it forward he's wrapped up by McCannon and Tia first set for Whitehaven yeah good set Jordan simple set basics go go forward with your forwards and then put a decent kick in Louis Gorman got very lucky he didn't knock on but you know he's made good yards and feathered just over the 30 now so fetching the ball forward now Ah Feverson Gareth Gale's coming off the wing to take this ball forward he's pulled down five metres short off halfway McCannon and Newton involved it's going to go right now into the hands of Connor Jones Jones looking dangerous there he's, he's always looking speedy in that nine position comes right now to Bussy Bussy then gets it across to Day they're going to the Brad Day now nearly through in fact he's still got what that's 15 20 force contact metres there from Brad Day to five and last of Feverson and within 12 metres here it's going to come left into the hands of Danny Addy Addy's going to look to step back up inside and try and exploit a gap there and he's going to be fetched down some desperate Dan defence from Whitehaven it's going to be a turnover ball but they're playing this what two metres away from their own line yeah it was a very good carry by Brad Day there Jordan just hit the hit the inside shoulder Rio Corkill and, and good leg drive he bumped Rio off with Kingy and uh, uh, Jack Mason with that to bring him down so fetching the ball forward now, Whitehaven. It was Gebby who fetched it forward from dummy half. Be interesting to see what he can do this afternoon. Obviously, we spoke to John Goley a few weeks ago. Why isn't a Dean Gebby playing? Just the fact that he wasn't fit. He hadn't got himself fit enough since he'd landed into the country. Been doing some extras, quite a lot of extras, to be fair. So Dean Gebby and has took his place on the wing this afternoon. It's Jake Mason that plays the ball. Third tackle. It goes now a couple of pairs of hands into the hands of Curtis Tia. Tia is going to be the man that's wrapped up ten short of halfway. Only two or three metres in from that popular side far touch line. Carter now then gets it across to Ross Ainley Ainley's going to be man wrapped up it's only made two or three metres there has Ainley so it's going to be five and last comes in to the boot now of Jake Carter left footed it's going to be putting plenty of pressure with that high on there is Gorman but easily taken by the whole KR man and then he's going to be wrapped up combination of Corkill, King and Evans 25 metres out it's going to be Paul Turner in there at dummy half line in weight Gill now is going to be the man to fetch it forward. He's going to be wrapped up by Adeen Gebby. Lachlan Hannigan involved in the first penalty of the afternoon. Holden down. Obviously being changed in the... I don't want to say change in the laws. I want to say a more change in the interpretation this season. Obviously Ashley and some teams still fall and follow that. Yeah, they are. You know, Gareth Gill's a very good winger as well, John. He's a, he's a man mountain of a winger. and They've just tried to cheat their way out of that one with that holding down. You know, It's a bit of a cheat way out. and no Lockie and Gebby being pinged for it so now they know they don't do it again Minikin takes the tap and now Brad Day fetches it forward they've started this on the Whitehaven 40 made 10 metres out of Featherston Bowles lining weight to dummy half going to go right then into the hands of Bussy comes across to Morris Camano the man who spent last season well, spent the last few seasons with Hunslet what was known as Hunslet Club Park side in the uh, Conference League comes across now then to Danny Addy had his wrapped up but Feather only 12 metres out here got numbers on this left hand side back inside to Gorman Gorman's going to be taken down but Fev knocking on the door here in the early stages just four minutes gone on BBC Radio Cumbria Sports Online and it's now Jack Bussey he's going to take some stopping there he's Jack Bussey I think Whitehaven have done have done well there just to keep him up and held him over the line so they're going to push him back and mean Fev's going to have a little bit of space to try and work in here 
but he's going to be in line with the left-hand side post attacking the Kells end in this first half are Rovers Jones going to look and put the kick towards the corner Romeo being caught out there I think and who's got the ball on that right hand side it could be Connor Wynn it's either Connor Wynn or Connor Barley on that right hand side either way for Featherstone Rovers they've got the first points of the afternoon just less than five minutes gone here at the recreation ground it is Whitehaven nil Featherstone Rovers four yeah great kick from uh, Connor Jones and Joey Romeo was in no man's land Jordan he, he's, he's gone up he's left he's just left a massive gap on that side you know you can't leave Connor Wynn and Connor Barley space down that side I think it was Connor Wynn showed his pace down and went to touch down but Joey Romeo doesn't need to come that far out of the line there you know there was nothing on player wise for them so he just he's put a speculative kick on Connor Jones and we've just been done by a kick if Joey Romeo is where he meant to be he either collects that and he's able to try and fetch it forward or he can just knock it dead and as you mentioned it, teams seem to be targeting sort of that side defence is it uh, Romeo and Teal on that side and they seem to be having some joy in the early weeks of the season yeah they do Jordan um, you know Curtis was doing well on that wing and then obviously John he stopped around and brought Curtis in the centre and Joey on the wing but you know, I think it's maybe something that John will probably look at going forward. Um, he probably has been looking at it, and obviously I wasn't in Toulouse last week, but it seemed to work all right last week. But we've just been—it's it's a speculative kick, and you know, Joey's got to do better. So BBC Radio Company of Sports Online, less than six minutes on the clock. And I think, I'm just having a look, they've got a delayed kick-off at Sheffield. So now I've got the BBC Sport off in front of me, and it's very rare I see 15-10 as a kick-off. We'll keep an eye on that one. I wondered if, I know I spoke to Dan Payne beforehand, the Raiders commentator, he said it took him four hours to get to Sheffield from Baddow this afternoon. So be interesting to see if there's maybe some traffic issues in and around the OLP, the Olympic Legacy Park. It, meanwhile, Danny Addy's sort of 20 metres on the straight, coming at this right-footed. It's going to fall short there for Addy, so it remains Haven nil, Rovers 4, BBC Radio Cumbria Sports Online. And we seem to say this quite a few often in the last few weeks, actually not the start, the Johnny Gordy will have been wanting. No, Jordan, it seems to be the case, doesn't it? We seem to start slowly, and I don't know why, but from this kick-off, I wouldn't hit it too hard, because it looks like that wind's picked up, especially that effort of the kick there from Addy, didn't really travel far. So Mason with the kick-off, he hasn't hit it too far, it's going to be Gorman to get underneath it, back inside then to Jack Pussy. It's a very uh, <laughs> very loud Haven fan behind this Shelton smashing him I'm, I'm sure they know the jobs what well, they have done in Bussy they've uh, wrapped him up 20 metres out from his own line in comes across now to Minikin Minikin being oh so no it was uh, Brad Day he's being pushed back by Guy Graham and Lachlan Hannigan looking to fetch the ball forward now our Rovers and they've made it to sort of 37, 38 metres away from their own line it's a quick scoop from Hanny Bowles in there at dummy half he's made 10 metres ball being fetched down a metre short of halfway Kamano then looks it forward Ainley's in there King's in there Guy Graham is the third man in there he's the five and last and Rovers at 38 away from Whitehaven's line here Paul Turner is going to be the man that puts it end over end first real test for the Dean Gebby and just had to reset himself slightly there to Gebby but he been able to take it but he's wrapped up pretty much straight away 15 metres out yeah it was a good set from Featherston wasn't it Jordan and then a good kick from Turner plenty of pressure but Gebby's done well there to claim that ball um, this ground should suit it Denny and this weather should as well you know hopefully we'll see the best of him speaking of Johnny Gawley prior to our chat on Thursday night he said the previous Tuesday before going to Toulouse they couldn't get onto it and then it's as firm as anything it's it's really firmed up in the last few weeks as this uh, recreation ground pitch as Joey Romeo spun out of one tackle nearly got away from the second there before being fetched down 35 out from his own line Newton in there a dummy half some, uh, slight, looked slightly forward to meet the Ryan King but not too many shots from those that's on the field King was wrapped up eight short of halfway Hannigan's going to put the kick in on the fourth tackle got it past Gorman come off his hands and that's going to be a knock on and exactly what Whitehaven needed Gorman can play all he wants but he come off his hand and then he bounced it hit the floor and it's going to be a scrum down head and feed here for Whitehaven you'd imagine in the middle of the field 10 metres out yeah good kick from Hannigan and you know Gorman he should have went for his feet really Jordan there was no pressure on him whatsoever and he's, he's tried to claim it and it's, it's gone forward it's a good result for Whitehaven Jordan and hopefully we can uh, make, some, make something out of this one of a score in the championship Spinton a 4-0 up at Halifax of course got the victory on the last weekend of the season to make Whitehaven sweat uh, after Shear last week and uh, obviously uh, what there was then survival battle Whitehaven now fed this scrum it's come left into the hands of Carter then over the top to Joby Romeo can Joby Romeo get there he's in that left hand side corner he's Joby Romeo fantastic acrobatic finish he was slightly behind the plane at the stretch for the ball over the top from Jay Carter but the Australians got in that left hand side corner it's his second try of the season scores a level Haven 4 Rovers 4 
Yeah, great play from the scrum, Jordan. Jay Carr, is, that's an outstanding pass from Jay Carr. That's a 20, 30 metre pass he's through there. And to be fair to Romeo, he, he was lagging high behind a bit when he caught it, but he's done well to get in that corner finish it because Connor Wynn, as we've just seen, he's no slouch. So a great finish from Joey Romeo, acrobatic in the corner, but all from Jay Carr's pass, a great try assist for Jake. Seen that, and we've seen it so often in the last few seasons from from all rugby league sides. Since scrums were reintroduced, there's a lot more going from player one and trying to catch sides out. If you can get that extra number with the with the, your opposition not noticing, it can be so devastating. And Whitehaven have been on the advantage of that. Yeah, I was looking there, Jordan. You know, Feathers had numbered up well, but they hadn't seen Mays and had sneaked round the side. They still had three on this side defend against Will and Gebby, so There was three on two on this side, and they're obviously lacking a number on that side. Um, and obviously Jake and Mays have picked that up well. And then Jake's through that wonderful pass there for Joey to get in the corner. So Jake Carter looking to tag on the extras now. Touchline is on the popular side touchline. He's 25 metres on the straight, maybe half a metre in off the touchline. Comes at it left footed, there's Jake Carter. And must have just fallen across. There would have been the near left hand side post and gone behind. It's been waved away. It remains Haven for. Rovers for, but that'll give Johnny and his uh, side some encouragement out there that he shows he, that there is an opportunity out there this afternoon. Yeah, there is, John, Jordan. Um, you know, Featherston, like we say, they are still star star studied side, but on the day, any team in this competition can beat anybody. So if White even can do the basic, keep the skill levels up and cut the stupid penalties out, then, you know, they'll match for anybody in this league. Carter collects on the kickoff and then finds Ross Ainley. Ainley's going to be stopped 15 metres out. Newton. Scuddy's back to getting position at dummy half, then comes across to Guy Graham. Just seems to get better and better, does Guy Graham. I think, st still got to remember, he's only won his, what, third full season, I think it will be now, he's, he's Guy, so he's still finding his feet in rugby league. It's Rio Corkle is the man that's going to be wrapped up now, just short of his own 30 metre line. Looking for a uh, infringement there, a, a white seven, nothing forthcoming. Ryan Cox tells him to get up and play the ball. Calls for Gebby being cut, taken high, nothing once again forthcoming. Newton finds King, Carter out the back to Mason. The space here goes straight away to Joey Romeo. Romeo's looking to step back inside, nearly got away from the Featherston defence there, did Romeo, but it is now the five and last comes into the feet of Jake Carter. Carter's going to put that ball end over end. There's plenty on the chase. Can Haddigan get there? Gorman just got there in front of him. There's a good take from the Fev Rovers fullback despite the pressure being put him on the by the Whitehaven attack yeah it was a very good set from Whitehaven Jordan threw the ball about a bit let the ball do the work I, I think they were lucky not to get a penalty for the high shot on Adeen Gebby from Danny Addy he caught him around the chops um, and then a great kick from Jay Carton good pressure from Lachlan Hannigan on uh, Louis Gorman but Louis Gorman done really well to take it under all that pressure to be fair to him Jordan so Rovers now looking at fetching this ball forward it's, it's uh and they're going to be playing this ball sort of off, 35 away from their own line ball cross to Turner Turner looking to get back inside gets away from Hannigan he's going to get away from Newton as well in the centre of the field now looking for the ball over the top and Tia looked to intercept but it's been picked up there by Conor Barley looking for Conor Wynn on that right hand side corner looking to step back inside he's win is he in that right hand side corner I think he has and that all stems from Whitehaven not being able to deal with Paul Turner over here he's got the ball over the top to find Conor Barley and as soon as Whitehaven hit back Rovers have taken the lead once again 13 minutes gone here at the recreation ground BBC Radio Cumbria Sports Online it is Haven 4 Rovers 8 yeah it came from the play before Turner got the ball Jordan Whitehaven didn't control the rook Newton and um, I think it was Hannigan they let him up quick and, and Turner got his got away from Lachlan Hannigan then he got away from Newton again spread the ball wide Barley's Curtis Tree's gone for the inception missed it and then Barley's gone downfield found Connor winning space who he said's got pace to burn Jake Mason's come across could Jake have done a bit, a bit better on wind travelling that speed possibly but you know it shouldn't have got to that point where Jake's having to make, try and make that tackle on wind but a great finish from Connor winning the corner and Fev going in the front Connor wins six try of the season, the double of the afternoon, because we think he got that first one. We will get that confirmed. But it's going to be another opportunity, and I think we're going to have a change at kicker already. Danny Addy obviously doesn't, isn't failing it from that right-hand side. And we're going to have Louis Gorman, the man who's in coming on dual reg from uh, Hull KR. He's kicked seven goals this season already in a Ferguson shirt. So had Danny Addy. So just going to see what he's going on and uh, what he's going to have an opportunity to do to try and better Danny Addy I think it's just good just having the Whitehaven backroom staff down below as I think them and Featherstone Rovers are on the same radio channel 
can just see that they're all putting numbers up and you put numbers up and so they're all they're all hearing what each yeah. other's saying and what, probably probably not exactly what they want to be doing no they've done that a few times this year johnny i know it happened against baron it happened last week against batley and i'm pretty sure one time this season i think it was against swinton or Sheffield, they were on the same radio length as a taxi firm in Whitehaven on the taxi rank. Taxi for Whitehaven. Fantastic conversion, however, from Louis Gorman on the right hand side. That's his eighth goal of the season in a Feverson, uh, a Feverson shirt. By confirmation, the Conor Wynn did score the first try. So that's a double for uh, for Conor Wynn. I like the fact my mum to get in touch from saying that. She's uh, for said, yeah, Feverson Twitter's called it the Conor Wynn. So thanks, mum. Thanks for listening in. Haven for Rovers 10. Kick off, getting back underway now. It's going to be Modest Kamano to look at fetching this ball forward from deep. Newton's in there, McCadden's in there, Ainley's in there to wrap him up 10, 11 metres out. Still not underway it's uh, Sheffield and Barrow. We'll keep an eye on that one, see what's going on there. But it's being thrown out now, into the hands now with Gill, then comes across to Minikin. Minikin looks immediately to look to step him back inside. Gebby, Hannigan and Will Evans all involved there. Gazgale's going to look to scoot from dummy half and good work there from Lachlan Hannigan to fetch him down. Six again. Lachlan Hannigan's judged to have held on a bit too longer than too much longer than he should have done. Bussy with the outrageous offload, but he's got through so often with them in the last few years. Finds Turner now, however. It takes three of them to eventually fetch Turner down. Graham is the man that did. Bowles is going to go right into the hands of Adi, then gets it across to Kamano. Kamano's going to be wrapped up not after making six seven eight post contact meters so fev on the white haven 30 it's a windy afternoon here in west cumbria bussy then comes across to turner turner then back inside to brad Dare. Dare's trying to exploit the gap soon closed there by corkill and newton but fev on the front foot here bows then goes right into the hands of danny addy then finds kamano good hit there from king eventually being wrapped up combination of three white haven players there is it ainley graham and king it is but they're only three, four metres out now. Ah, Rovers. Going to go right into the hands of Jones. Jones looks to step back inside. And he's going to drop the ball there. It's going to be... It's gone backwards. So, this is a real referee, Ryan Cox. So, he's five and last. Comes left into the hands of Turner from dummy half. Going to put a kick towards the corner. Gebby's trying to rise the highest. And it's been knocked on by Adin Gebby. Has it got to be a challenge in the air? Is it going to be clean? It does. And Adin Gebby on his first league appearance for Johnny Gawley's White Ravens come up with the error in the air. And it's third try for, uh, for Feverson this afternoon. BBC Radio Cumbria Sport Online. It's now Haven 4, Feverson 14. Yeah, Jordan uh, comes from the back to six, which I think was very harsh on Lachlan Hannigan. I thought he was, he was dominant in the tackle there, but then... I don't know where he's got it went back there Jordan it was clearly a knock on from what Maurice Camano but he can only do what the referee says play to his whistle and then I think Gebby's been unlucky in the corners well. I thought Gareth Gale knocked on and then Minikins and then Minikins touched down but again he only do what the referee says he's, he's played onto that so it's one of them mate you know it's, it's a tough old way back or whatever now but the same do this every every week don't they you know they go behind and then they've got to work their way back like you say, that six again, I feel it was harsh. Like you say, Hannigan had got the dominant, but he just hold over the ankle. I think maybe if he, would, he'd get, if he, he was on top of him, maybe he'd have got away with it. The fact that he was holding the ankle and Gaz Gale was looking to try and get up and play the ball. But uh, still no further word at uh, Sheffield and Barrow. I hope everything's OK at the Olympic Legacy Park. But Louis Gorman's going to be lining up this conversion. He's, coming at it, uh, he's going to come at it right-footed on the opposite touchline this occasion. Is Gorman Let's see. a metre and a half in from the touchline, 22 metres on the straight, plenty of angle on this for the whole KR man to deal with. Comes at it now, just falls wide right of the post, so it remains here at the recreation ground. Whitehaven 4, Featherstone Rovers 14, and, and as you've said, Ashley, we've they've White Evans picked up home victories against Swinton and Barrow, coming against from 14 and I think 12 points respectively if they're going to get anything here this afternoon and end what is a a bit of a hoodoo against uh, Fev they're going to do it tough once again yeah they are um, you can't give teams like this a start and they have but no why even's got to come back Jordan you know it's but it is going to be difficult um, but they've just got to stop giving the penalties away we've said that from the start basic basics is don't give penalties away against teams like this don't give them a foot up and a leg up because this is what they'll do to you they will punish you these sort of sides we've just seen it there Fetching the ball forward from the kickoff, Kamano plays the ball. Comes across a couple of pairs of hands, fights Turner. Turner then comes across to uh, England. I think it is off the bench, is it? No, nearly lost the ball there. It's Brad Deer. 
comes across again to Turner down this short side looks to get back inside finds Bussy Bussy shapes the dummy but wrapped up Ross Ailey and Ryan King comes in and helps him complete the tackle 35 out from their own line here Bowles in at dummy half comes out the back to Jones Jones just has to slow it and finds Gorman Gorman's trying to find some space but he's stretched down exactly on halfway comes across then to is it uh, it is Danny Addy once again in at loose forward this afternoon for this Trevison side it is the five and last now 40 out from the wide seven line going to go right to Connor Jones McCadden looking to put that pressure on it's high in the air Romeo rises the highest and Fev just wait to the second he hits the floor and then he's uh, wrapped up there plays the ball 22 metres out carted in there at dummy half finds Curtis Tia I don't think what any of them Feverston Rovers defenders were onside but referee Ryan Cox waves it away Newton in there at dummy half first penalty of the afternoon for Whitehaven as of then the are pin for offside I think that's sort of a sympathy penalty I think he knows he missed the first one I think I'll pin them on the second yeah, there's sometimes you know, that John with Danny Addy was a, a mile offside, you know. I think it was Addy, it was either Addy or Bussy, one of them was next right next to him and they're offside. So James Ford will not be happy with that one. Um, he'll probably pull whoever it was. I think it was Jack Bussy looking at the numbers. Um, so yeah, why well, even got a bit of a relieving penalty there, but like you say, probably a sympathy one. And that is a fantastic kick from Jake Carter. He's made what 35 metres on that. So Whitehaven are going to start here on the Feverston 30. Curtis T has played it a millimetre from where the line where he should have and Ryan Cox says you need to go back and play it again so he takes the tap and he takes the line on once again does Curtis Tia despite the defensive line have an opportunity to reset now is Hugh Worthington getting ready to come on down below us on this right hand side Carter then comes across to King King then finds Guy Graham trying to find a gap there is Graham and it's going to be another penalty here and Guy Graham's caught high once again back to back penalties if they've given Whitehaven an opportunity here yeah like we said you can't do this Jordan you, you, Featherson can't do it to Wyvern it's a leg up and that's what James Ford will be telling them don't give Wyvern a leg up because they can punish as we've seen with the Jay Carter pass and try take the top Guy Graham is the man to fetch it forward it's fetched down 12 metres out just to the right hand side of the post Newton in there with dummy half going to come across to King then out the back to Carter then comes across to Owen McCarran McCarran steps inside Owen McCarran's in it is it I'm just double checking it is it's his first China Whitehaven shirt for the Australian they go over they've hit back of Whitehaven and getting the ball underneath the sticks they should be able to reduce this deficit to four it's Haven uh, eight Feverston 14 yeah, lovely little little pass there from Jay Carter again, Jordan. You know, it's another try assist for him. And Louis McCarran's hit that ball like a steam train. There was nobody stopping him there. I know Louis Gorman tried at the back, but he wasn't going to stop Owen from scoring that try. He put a bit of footwork on him as well. You know, it was a great line, great footwork from Owen. And like I say, a lovely little slide pass from Jay Carter. But all, all wraps there to Owen McCarran for the line and the pace he hit that liner. As I mentioned, it's Owen McCarran's first try of the season. Of course, his first try in a white saving shirt. Hugh Worthington has come onto the field and he has replaced uh, Guy Graham. And Brad England's come on down below us as well. So we'll wait and see who that's for in just a moment for Featherston Rovers. But Jake Carter's is going to have an opportunity here from right in front to knock over the extra two points and going to reduce the deficit once more. And when White Haven are getting opportunities, uh, Ashley, as you've seen from the scrum and that try, they are taking them this afternoon. Yeah, Carter like, adds on the two. Yeah, like I said to you, Jordan, that's what James Ward will be saying. We, we've said about White there, they can't give Featherson a foot with penalties. Featherson give two penalties away. White Haven will punish you, and that's what that's what James Ford will be saying. And, and Jordan will be saying it as well. Stop giving the stupid penalties away. Trying to cheat your way out. It's a cheap way of cheating. So, scores elsewhere around Rugby League in the Super League. It's Hull FC 6, Leeds 6, down into the Championships. Championship, I should say. Batley 6, York 0, Bradford 0, Witness 4, Doncaster 4, Dewsby 6. Still 4 0 at the Shirt to Swinton. Still waiting for kickoff at Sheffield. Nothing on social media further yet. As Gorman takes the kickoff, it's flat, but right into the hands of Jay Carter and finds Ross Ainley. He only keeps his legs pumping, but taken down what 18 metres away from his own line Newton in there at dummy half comes across now to Worthington that could be called high and referee Ryan Cox heard the shouts and says it was on his shoulder Gebby's in there at dummy half and you find a Dane Gebby that's what you expect from a Dane Gebby looking for support back inside to Lachlan Harrigan Harrigan's looking for support and he's going to go he's taken down there that's what you expect to see from a Dane Gebby Whitehaven and I want 18 metres out Newton comes right to King comes right then to Will Evans Will Evans looks to take a step outside then to Cogill oh drops the line with the drops the ball with the line begging 
job she's there but that's what you want to see from Whitehaven that's what you expect to see from a Dean Gibby he's had his uh, critics so far has the Papua New Guinean but when he's doing stuff like that he could be a superstar in a Whitehaven shirt yeah we've seen him do that on his, on his YouTube highlights Jordan for, for Papua New Guinea against a lot of teams his highlights in Australia you know he's found a lazy defender and hit them with footwork he's gone through nice pass to Hannigan could Hannigan have kicked because he had Mason right next to him or looking back Hannigan's you could see he was looking for that support but he realised he was a bit too close in just to get the pass in there was a man on the other side that would have hit Jake Mason yeah he potentially could have put the kick in but and I think that John Goal he said that it was second tackle but just that white line fever they're seeing it was there they're seeing an opportunity and Corkill just couldn't gather that last gas pass to be fair Will Evans didn't need a pass he'd he beat, didn't he'd no beat, he probably didn't he'd beat Paul Turner he, Will probably could have scored if he threw another dummy because Gale was too interested in Rio Corkill and to be fair Gale's done the right thing he stayed out and he's coming with the win but just looking back there Danny Addy he's, has actually hurt himself putting that high shot on uh, Hugh Worthington he's, he looks like he was holding his shoulder he's carrying on but he's carrying his shoulder a bit Fantastic defence from Whitehaven there. They've dragged the Featherstone man, what, 10 metres laterally? Is it, uh, it's Connor Wynn, who's literally on the other side of the field compared to where his wing is. But uh, Fev looking to fetch his ball forward now. Danny Addy looking to uh, go lateral here. He's the Featherstone man, Brad England. Stop, bumps Lachlan and Hannigan off there, the Dingland, but then fetched down by combination of Ainley and Corkill. Bows in there, finds then Bussy. Bussy bounces off Hugh Worthington and then wrapped up Ainley, Newton and Worthington involved it is the five and last Featherston just five metres over the halfway line comes back to Paul Turner Turner puts the kick Mason's got some work to do to get there but he does does the Italian international finds then Joey Romeo and Whitehaven definitely have a spring in their step here but that was an offload that wasn't needed to a Dean Gebby and Gebby has then got the ball backwards and actually it's been ripped off him I think one on one there it's like you say it was what Whitehaven didn't need to do Romeo with the pass to Gebby and they've been pinned there of Whitehaven Tia noticed he was on his own fantastic work from Curtis Tia but then Tia is pinned for offside and you can hear what the Whitehaven fearful amongst us think about that they think Tia had got back Dan Harmarsh getting ready to come on for Whitehaven I think Curtis Tia has been harsh he's done there Jordan he is absolutely clean Brad England out and he has been pinned for offside Curtis is a quick lad and I don't think he's been offside but Joey Romeo did not need to pass that ball to a Dean Gebby. I don't know what is going through Romeo's head. Why has he passed that ball in our own 20 under pressure? Zero tackle. You know, it wasn't a five and last season. They were trying to get more away. But Jack Bussey now got ball in hand and it's Feverson now putting pressure on the White Haven line. 26 minutes gone. It's been an entertaining 26 minutes here on BBC Radio Cumbria Sports Online. It's going to go right to... Uh, just checking it's Danny Addy and he's got the ball on that right hand side as Danny Addy and Whitehaven attacking the line should have scored in this right hand side corner whether it was through Evans or whether it was through Corkill and a moment of madness at the back from Joey Romeo looking to get the pass away to a Dean Gebby has cost Whitehaven Rovers have gone in for their four for the afternoon in the 27th minute it's Haven 10 Rovers 18 yeah Jordan that defensively that's very poor from James Newton and Ryan King on their own line there Addy's just gone straight That'll, that will annoy John D that somebody just barged over a single, a single man on his own, not even running with support, he's just gone on his own and he's gone over King and Newton, and it's, it's a poor effort defensively, but it comes back again from the penalty, don't give them a leg up, however harsh we think it is, it's a penalty, just get on with it. You can certainly hear what the White Evan fearful amongst us think, there's uh, a couple of more interchanges getting made, because well, Edden Albert and Reese Butterworth getting ready to come onto the field here for this Feverson side, so plenty of changes being made by uh, James Ford, I want to know why that number three has a Wakefield Trinity badge on the back of it. Oh, yeah. I just noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, yeah, but uh, Jack Bussey's going to be the one of the men leaving the field as Dan Harmarsh comes off as Louis Gorman adds the extras. It's going off all he uh, all around us here. And it is now Whitehaven 10, Feverson 20, and you can certainly hear what the Whitehaven faithful think about some of the decisions out there. We're going to be the Curtis Tiered, obviously, decision, but... As, uh, Ross Ainley is the man to be replaced by uh, Dan Hanmarsh. Yeah, Ross has had a good stint there, hasn't he? He's, he's done well, Ross. But John Deal say, well, Ryan Cox doesn't need to give that penalty if Joey Romeo doesn't offload because we're not in that position. So there's, it's just excuses, Jordan, but it was a bad call from Ryan Cox. Kick off, and that is going to be allowed to bounce, and it bounces into the hands of Wellington and Albert. He fetches the ball forward to the Papua New Guinea, 12, 13 metres out from his own line now. comes across then to uh, I think is that Gorman no it might not be I'm not too sure is it be Butterworth actually 
it's just waiting to be held up Carter, McCannon, Newton all involved there comes across now into the hands of Paul Turner Turner then out the back to Gorman now Gorman trying to get through the line there but Hannigan and Will Evans are the man to wrap him up Day in there at dummy half comes across to Danny Addy Addy gets it away to one of his teammates can't quite tell who it was who's from here but plays the ball now does Brad England looking for the 40-20 here from dummy half Mason should have enough to more than get there Addy does and Mason's going to be looking to fetch his ball forward trying to get around Reese Butterworth but he's not going to be able to and he's uh, wrapped up just short of his own 30 metre line Carter lining weight at dummy half goes across then to Joey Romeo Romeo's the man pulled back two or three metres there was Romeo before finding the floor Carter in there once again comes across now to Dan Hindmarsh Hindmarsh keeps his leg pumping and it's going to be wrapped up half a metre short of the 40 Gebby's in there at dummy half then looks to nearly through that again and that's what you're going to see from Adin Gebby he was almost through there plays the ball just over the halfway line Newton scoots from dummy half and dropped the ball there well, if it's a strip it's a Feverston knock on or it's a Whitehaven knock on and I think he's ruled that James Newton's knocked on because he's given obviously given the six again White Devon been a guilty of that a couple of times I've lost the ball in one-on-ones as Jones is going to be the man that's wrapped up now I think you just had done do they John I thought Keenan Tomlinson ripped it out <laughs> but it's uh, well and but now to fetch his ball forward taken down it's not a penalty it, is, it just isn't he's thrown his foot up in the air as well and Albert he's landed safely front first and it's a penalty for going over the horizontal when Welly and Albert's thrown his foot in the air you can see why crowd players coaches everyone alike are getting, are getting frustrated especially over that rail when you can see that Albert's just thrown his foot up in the air Ash yeah that, that definitely wasn't a penalty Jordan it's getting silly now some of these decisions in, in rugby league Jordan especially that one Welly and Albert's lifted his foot up I don't know what White Evans meant to do with that but again penalty the likely the outcome will probably be a Featherson score because it's a more pressure on the wide line more defending Jordan it's a long pass comes across to Danny Addy then finds now Paul Turner Turner throws the dummy finds then Greg Minikin Minikin's going to be wrapped up combination of Hannigan Evans Corkle involved there as well it's Butterworth's in there at uh, dummy half going to go right then into the hands of Addy then finds now Brad England England gets out of the one tackle spins out of here trying to get out of a second but it's taken down it's only two, three metres out here. Butterworth in there at dummy half goes right into the hands of Jones. Jones and out the back of Gorman. Gorman looks to step back inside, but he's wrapped up there. Newton's there alongside Jake Carter. Going to come across now to Connor Jones. Jones then finds Danny Addy. Then finds Brad Day on the crash ball, but Whitehaven to survive. They've got one more tackle to survive here. Addy's in there at dummy half, going to come left, puts a little kick through, and King gets there, he's knocked that on as Ryan King, he's knocked that on as Ryan King, but however, it's not given by referee Ryan Cox, but Whitehaven are bringing this a metre away from their own line. And Adin Gebby nearly through once again, but that is high, that is high, and it is going to be a penalty to Whitehaven, referee Ryan Cox initially didn't look interested in giving that, and we're seeing what we're expecting to see from Adin Gebby in a Whitehaven shirt in the opening half, and now here, he's trying to get his side on the front foot, as... Uh, James Newton is the man to leave the field I haven't quite seen who's gone on Jamie Dornan of course has gone on that's coming towards us so Jamie Dornan so looks like you're obviously going to expect him to play nine is what we've seen in previous weeks we'll wait and see how that goes going to uh, sap here our oh, white server not being able to find 20 metres on that but it means they're only 25 metres away from their own line yeah they are Jordan um, a high shot there from, from Danny Addy that's the second one he's threw it in he's a Gebby again get away from that touchline Gebby but if you watch Wallet and Albert he's never on side he doesn't get back and now there's Reese Butterworth Hannigan's in there at dummy uh, in, in, at half finds then Dan Hardmarsh hit on there from Albert Butterworth and Danny Addy got to play this five short at halfway Jamie Dorden in there at dummy half comes across then to Ryan King King just faces up and takes his opposite numbers on Doran now finds Hugh Worthen. Worthen's trying to find some space. Got the offload there. Has got it away to Jay Carter. Now finds McCarron. McCarron's going to keep his legs pumping, keep his legs pumping, and keep them legs pumping. What is he? So 18 metres away now from this white uh, Feverston line. It is the five and last. Don't think Jamie Doran has. He's put the little kick through. Gorman, yeah, it's just bounced and bounced and bounced. And Jamie Doran just puts his hand up in apologies and says, That's a bit too hard for me. And it's going to be a seven tackle set, top 20 here for this Feverston side Gal, um, Gorman takes the top and finds Gaz Gill 
yeah, it was it wasn't the best kick from Jammer there. You know, we, we haven't learned from our lessons. We we put a similar kick in against Batley, and you know we've got, we've got to be better, Jordan. We've, we've got to be better on your last tackle players there. But Fair have defended well there and had, had a good set of six from Fair defensively. So Butterworth in a dummy half goes right into the hands of Connor Jones. Back inside then too. See it's uh, McCarno. Plays the ball. Butterworth scoots from dummy half, makes 10, 15 metres before finding a Whitehaven man there. Worthington and Hannigan complete the tackle. Sort of lying on top of each other here. Uh, Worthington and Butterworth. Addy's in there at dummy half, comes across to Albert. Just waiting to see, yeah, he's being wrapped up there as Albert. 30 metres out here, Butterworth in a dummy half. Going to go right then across to Addy. Addy shaped the kick but then finds Jones. Jones is then going to put the kick forward towards the corner. Connor wins trying to get there and it's just, just got to be too deep. And it's uh, going to be a uh, scrum down here, head and feed to Whitehaven, 10 metres out. Oh, yeah. Turn, turnover ball actually. Yeah, clever player from Connor Jones again. He's, he's looking dangerous, like I said, he's probably one of the best nines in the league, but he's, he's playing standoff today and he's, he's put another good kick in there. Like we said, Connor win, you've got to be on your money and Joey's got to be careful with that, you know, he can maybe take a step back, take a yard back, you know, he doesn't have to be in that line. Will Evans fetching the ball forward from that turnover ball. We make it five and a half to go till half time here on BBC Radio, Cumbria Sports Online. Gebby looking for that sidestep, trying to get a fast play of the ball, and he does. Jamie Dornan's in there, then finds Hannigan, finds King. King shapes a dummy and fetches it forward. Joey Romeo looking to offer support. Jamie Dorian in the dummy half goes left to Mears and Mears and then going to look to step back inside as definitely opportunities out there for Whitehaven if they can try and keep on this front foot when they've got the ball Carter then shapes the dummy spins out to one near he gets away there does Jay Carter it's going to be the five and last Whitehaven 38 metres away from the Featherstone line Dorian in a dummy half going to come right to Hannigan Hannigan's going to put the kick towards the corner going to put pressure under Gorman Gorman just gets there and then going to be hit by Curtis Tia he's going to play this ball 12 out yeah good seven Whitehaven <coughs> nice kick from, uh, from, from Lachlan Hannigan as well and a good chase so looking to uh, fetch this ball forward are, uh, are Featherston. We'll run through some scores around there when we next get an opportunity. Gaz Gale has dropped the ball clean there. You don't say that too often about Gareth Gale and Whitehaven are going to have another opportunity here. Just before the... Uh, well, we make it, what, five, four and a half before half time and Whitehaven's going to have another opportunity here. What, 12, 13, 14 metres out from the centre of the field. Can they try and get another scrum player? Yeah, yeah, like you say, you don't say that very often about Gareth Gale, do you? He doesn't make mistakes, Gareth Gale, so it's a, it's a rarity, that, so we should probably all breathe that one in. Um, but yeah, White and it looks like they've set up again again. Featherson have gone three on two in numbers, Jordan, so they must be expecting Mason to maybe sweep round, but White have lined up exactly like they did last time for the try. So Carter's in there, Len looking to find Mason, Mason haven't do it all, was looking to step back inside, but Featherson pinned for offside from the, uh, from the scrum. We make it just under four till half time. And they're going to look to, and I can, I've seen that a couple of teams utilise that now. You get, obviously, you get the opportunity to, yeah, we'll go for the scrum side in the middle. And why not? With, with the way the amount of tries you see from scrums in, the, the, in these these last few seasons, it's, it's it's literally an extra play for you. Yeah, of course, it is Jordan. And, you know, again, Featherston have numbered with that three on two again and three on three. So they must be expecting Mike to switch something up here gone into the hands of Carter, Carter run towards the line, Tia was on his left hand side, Dornan in there at dummy half, five out of Whitehaven, coming back towards Dan Hindmarsh, looking to use his frame there, his Hindmarsh to try and bully his way over, but he's going to be wrapped up, only a metre out, Dornan in there at dummy half, comes right to King, King then throws the dummy, maybe slightly high from Albert there on King, but no one really shouting for it, taking down his King, just to the right hand side of the post, two, three metres out maximum, Jordan's in there at dummy half. Looking to go left into the hands of Carter. Then finds Jake Mason. Now finds Curtis Tia. Tia finds Joby Romeo. Romeo in that left hand side corner. Romeo's second try of the afternoon. He's third of the season. Whitehaven reduced the deficit to six points here on BBC Radio Cumbria Sport Online. It's Haven 14, Featherston 20. Yeah, again, Jake Mason, nice pass out the back to uh, And Curtis Tia's hit a great line. Shrug one man off. He's, he looks like he's going to be held. He managed to get his arm free to Romeo. Who who does well to hold off Louis Gorman in the corner, to be fair, Jordan, he showed some strength there to get that ball down, and, you know, like we say, it's called come from Gareth Gale's mistake, it's another foot up for Whitehaven, so, it's a very evenly matched contest, I'd say, Jordan, I wouldn't say Whitehaven's getting rolled, I wouldn't say Featherstone, it's a very evenly, it's a really good game, to be fair. 
what's that 34 points scored in 38 minutes of rugby it's been a, it's, we've said it was pretty hectic out there and has been on BBC Radio Cumbria Sports Online it is now Whitehaven 14 Ferguson 20 and Jay Carter's going to have an opportunity here from out wide once again to try and reduce the deficit to four points only a couple of minutes before the half time break I pointed out one score to you which I'll run through in just a moment but in the championship it's Batley 10 York 0 Bradford 0 Widnes 6 Doncaster 16 Dewsbury 6 and this is the one I pointed out to you Halifax nil, Swinton 16, which means if that gets to half time without Halifax scoring, they'll have got 100, uh, 120 minutes at home without scoring a point minimum. And then uh, it's still Sheffield nil, Barrow nil, as that kicked off late. Carter comes at it left footed, Jay Carter right over the Trotman Blue and Gold dot as it is there on the crossbar here at the recreation ground. Fantastic touchline conversion from Jay Carter, and it is now Whitehaven 16, Ferguson 20. We make it a minute to the half time break. Yeah, like I said, it's been a really evenly matched contest, Jordan. And you know, there's been some great rugby players by both sides, some nice tries scored. And you know, if Whitehaven, like we've said, if they cut out the penalties, Jordan, then you know, the, you, won't, you won't give Ferguson a leg up, and, and they look like they're capable of handling them at the minute. Like you say, Gareth Gale, it was an uncanny mistake for Gareth Gale to make. You just don't see it. And why even have punished Featherston on this occasion, which will, which will kill James Ford? Gorman with the kickoff. Just holds up slightly. Carter gets there, now finds Dan Harnmarsh. Harnmarsh runs forward. Rep there by Albert. Uh, who else is involved in there? Brad England. He's going to play this ball. Well, how can he play the ball? <laughs> He's telling him to get back and play the ball. But... Feverson's two defenders were still on him so it's either a penalty for playing the ball out of position or it's a penalty because Fever held on so long either way game's back underway Dorden's in there at dummy half going to go left and find Curtis Tia wouldn't surprise me if Whitey haven't tried to shift this ball right here and try and get Gebby some space in the final we make it only final few seconds before the half time break Curtis Tia looks to get up and play the ball but he's ruled to have knocked it on despite the uh, pressure there from uh, the Feverston Rovers defence and then Connor Jones is very lucky that the touch is just going to wave that away because he's just pushed Curtis to you so it's going to be a scrum down here head and feed to Feverston Rovers we make it with over time clock has stopped so there's not too much time left in this first half at the recreation out Whitehaven it'll be desperate to hold out comes across to Turner Turner I'm trying to get away from one can't do that and there he's the hooter so it's half time here at the recreation ground on BBC Radio Cumbria Sport Online it is Whitehaven 16 Ferguson Rovers 20 36 minutes uh, 36 points in 40 minutes of action here at the Otis Rec because he won't be happy with that that Whitehaven have uh, scored 16 points so Mason with the kick off Gorman's had to run forward for it just sort of held up in that wind as you mentioned it's got progressively stronger throughout the uh, first half and across the half time break Gorman plays it now what, 25 metres out Gorman comes across to Gaz Gale Gale's then going to be wrapped up there by a combination of Hugh Worthington and Ryan King then comes across to Wellington Albert Albert's looking to get that arm through but there's four Whitehaven defenders around him and he's taken down 10 short of halfway on his own 40 going to be looking for 40-20 here and I imagine that would have come from James Ford and that is is it short is it short it's short it's short only just but you mentioned at half time that is something Whitehaven will have to watch for because you would expect it from Paul Turner Connor Jones can do a job out there for you as well yeah clearly you can Jordan was a great kick like you said maybe a yard short so a good effort from Jones and yeah I was quite surprised Whitehaven didn't try and do it in that first half but we seem to be trying to pin them into certain positional zones rather than going for the 40-20s but you can see what Fedden's going to do but that's now going to put doubt in Joey Romeo's mind do I stay in the line or do I drop back just in case but Mason should be telling him so it was Heinmarsh that played the ball then found Will Evans Evans was the man that was wrapped up Doran was in there at dummy half comes across to Curtis Tia Tia's going to be the man I'll say wrapped up but it's been pushed back two, three, four metres there before eventually being shouted at held Heinmarsh now sorry you know is it no it's Gebby yeah of course sorry my apologies he's wrapped up 35 away from his own line Jake Mears in the white haven full back now with ball in hand he's taken down six, seven metres short of halfway Jamie Doran finds Ryan King then comes across to Dine Harnmarsh Harnmarsh falls onto his front it is the five and last eight metres into Whitehaven territory Lachlan Hannigan now on the five and last goes across to Will Evans Evans is then going to put the kick in 
and it's Al Dungorman there and Gebby's on the sprint Joey Romeo's trying to get there they're all trying to get there fantastic defensive work from White Raven absolutely fantastic the second they realised Gorman was in trouble they sprang forward and put pressure on the young fullback he's been pinned behind his own try line goal line drop out forced by Haven yeah it was a nice player from Lachlan Hannigan nice kick from Elevens and the Dean Gebby I, I didn't realise he was that quick he's doing what we get to the goal there I thought he was quick but I didn't know he was that quick yeah, we, we, we've seen what Dean Gabby can do in, in his YouTube highlights, and, and obviously they are highlights, but he's, he's for showing something out there this afternoon. Is the Papua New Guinean. Lachlan Hannigan gets the goal line drop out, then comes and finds Hugh Worthington. Worthington runs this ball forward. And he's going to be wrapped up 30 metres out. Dorning in there at dummy half. It's going to come left end to the on loan. Dan Hindmarsh trying to keep his legs pumping there. He's the Castleford Tiger playing this 20 metres out Doran finds King attacking the Kells end our White Haven in the second half going to come left into the hands now with Jake Carter Carter then comes across to Curtis Tia Tia then finds Joey Romeo oh! should have been in in this left hand side corner Tia potentially could have gone himself but there was opportunities there for Tia to go himself or find Romeo the pass was just behind Joey Romeo and has gone into touch there's Whitehaven are knocking on the door there is opportunities to get their first home victory over Featherston in just under 16 years here this afternoon yeah that's like Jordan John, says every week jo uh, Jordan skill levels skill levels is it a bad pass from Case or is it a bad t run from Joey Romeo it's, it's one of them you know could Joey have got it with two hands or was it, or was it a bad pass you know it's, it's the skill levels again that John mentions every week so Rovers are wrapped up through Brad England 18 metres away from their own line now Wellington Albert big run there from Albert met by Ryan King shouts to potentially a shoulder charge there from Ryan King but referee Ryan Cox was happy with the tackle that King had put in he's been fetched down alongside with Rio Corkill Danny Addy again gets it across to Turner Turner then comes across then to Greg Minikin Minikin's close to that popular side touchline Gale's going to be in there at dummy half into Whitehaven territory now our um, Rovers Danny Addy gets the offload away to Connor Jones Jones gets away from one gets away from two Worthington throws the offload it's going to bounce into the hands of Gale he was in front was Gaz Gale but it's going to be the five and last here comes across then to Turner Turner's going to put it spiralling high Romeo's trying to get there he's going to allow it to bounce and it's if you're going to allow it to bounce you probably should have let it go <laughs> then he's going to come back there to Joey Romeo you never let a rubber leg ball bounce and then when you do it looked like it was going to be going dead but uh, Mason's then pinned on the second tackle now Romeo's in there to dummy half and finds Curtis Tia Tia's going to try and get his head through but he isn't getting past Wellington Albert Albert dives on him alongside Brad England Dorning in there at dummy half then finds a Dean Gebby Gebby gets away from one gets away from two then the Papua New Guinean is away once again who's on his right hand side it's Jack Mason ball hits the floor skill level once again as Johnny Gawley says week in week out and but that's going to be into the hands of Jake Mason he can't be offside oh yeah of course sorry just about to say he can't be pinned for offside Gebby didn't knock on Gebby didn't knock on and Dean Gebby didn't knock on that's a that's a poor call from Ryan Cox Gebby didn't knock on that is poor from Ryan Cox once again so far this afternoon and Dean Gebby put the ball backwards he didn't knock on he's pinned and he's been right there and have been stung there absolutely stung yeah Gebby didn't knock on he threw a pass on the inside now, if he's saying that Jake Mays, uh, that White ever have knocked on in the tackle, it's two on one, it's a penalty. He's got that absolutely wrong, Jordan. That's horrendous from Ryan Cox. Well, Feverson are going to have the ball here, just over their own 30 metre line. Bring the ball forward. It's going to be fetched down just short of the, uh, well, just on their own, uh, on their own 40. Ball in the hands now with Connor Wynn, former Hull FC man, of course. Two tries this afternoon has Wynn but he's taken down combination Dan Hamash in there Worthington's in there Jamie Dolan's in there Whitehaven have got this Feverson side rattled at the moment here it's now uh, Brad Deer fetching this ball forward just over the halfway line put a worth lining weight to dummy half then comes across then to Danny Addy comes across then to uh, 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 Kamano who's back onto the field he's put down onto his back 30 metres out Butterworth in line in weight at dummy half goes left into the hands end of England England then is going to be met there by Lachlan Hannigan oh he's going to got away there after throwing the looked and thrown the offload just switched off for a minute there but he's now going to be the five and last the 12 metres out Butterworth 
going to come right now into the hands of Connor Jones. Jones is going to put a kick towards the corner. And that's challenging the air. It's come off the hand of Joey Romeo. And this should be White Davon. Is it going to be air? It's come off the hand of Joey Romeo there. Hasn't played it as Romeo. But because it was a sort of a challenge in the air, it's going to be a Feverson Rovers scrum down, head and feet, 10 metres out. Yeah, again, it's just a ha- I think that's harsh on Joey because he's not looking at the ball. I know it's at his hand, but he's not actually challenging. Both of them have gone up for the challenge, and it's just sort of, as they've gone up for the challenge, it just sort of hit his hand, so, which was more than the hand he was challenging with, it was his right hand. But Feverson play the ball, comes left into the hands of Brad Deer. It's going to be five metres out here. Six again, Cole. White Devon putting plenty of pressure on themselves defensively. Has he got that ball down? I think he has his Danny Addy. Back to back. Sets. Pressure put on there. White Devon aren't happy with some of the decisions out there. But it's Danny Addy on that left-hand side that's got the ball down. Former Bradford Bull, of course, being around this game as Danny Addy. And grounded the ball in that left-hand side corner. It is Haven fourth, uh, 16, Feverson Rovers 24. Yeah, I think Wyatt have been on the back of two really, really harsh calls there from Ryan Cox, Jordan. I, I've got to admit, that was never a knock-on that he gave a knock-on for in the middle of the field. It was a pass backwards and then it should have been played on, Mays, and you should have just played on. But And then, like you said, I know where he's coming from. You were coming from with the challenge in the air, but Joey Romo, he's, I don't even think he's challenging. He just doesn't know what to do. He's, he's more interested in Connor Wynn than he's the ball. So, uh, two harsh calls and... It's that old thing of giving teams a leg up and they've, they've, they've punished White Evan of, of Featherstone with uh, another try there for Danny Addy. Don't get me wrong, the defence wasn't the best on the line and Addy shouldn't get the ball down where he did, but Featherstone shouldn't be in that position. Rovers' is fifth try of the afternoon and Danny Addy's sixth try of the season. I want to say a slightly easy conversion attempt for Gorman. He hasn't had the, the most easiest so far this afternoon. He's maybe three or four metres off the touchline on this occasion exactly on the 20 metre line plenty of angle on it still for the young Jill Reg full backing from Hull Kingston Rovers his fourth game in a Featherston shirt this season going to come at this is Gorman there's plenty of wind behind him and he's been able to add the extras so it's Haven 16 Featherston 26 BBC Radio Cumbria Sport Online and I like say actually just them calls that it, it, they can go either way and they can really make a massive difference yeah, of course I can, Jordan. I, 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 I've seen Ryan Cox officiate a couple of times. I've really, I thought he was a really good young referee, but today, Jordan, he, he's made some really strange calls, and I don't like bagging referees, Jordan. But that, that one with the knock-on with the pass in the field baffled me. I don't know where he's got that from. Yeah, we've had him earlier in the campaign. It might have been was it, was it Workington in the 1895 Cup or? Maybe even the pre-season friend. We've definitely had him this season, Ryan Cox. And I thought he put in a good performance on that afternoon. Ryan King is struggling there. He's just took a knock there as, as Ryan King. He's just holding on to his head. I think he's just been caught in the tackle. And that'll be a, an interchange that Johnny Goal he definitely won't want to be making if uh, Ryan King does have to leave the field. I didn't see it. Just seen it but he just, he just bounced off the tackle, didn't he? And just immediately went to hold his head. Yeah, I think he clashed heads with uh, Hugh Worthy. I don't know if he's maybe maybe got a bit of cladder on his on his face as well, Jordan, or if he's a head knock. But um, I'd imagine if Kingy does come off, Dan Highmarsh can play for in his play there for Cass. Um, and straight Fred- away as the White Evan physio called for the HIA, so that will be uh, him done for the next 15 minutes. Guy Graham's going out there, so I'd imagine yeah, you're probably going to see Dan Highmarsh one at the 15. Of, oh, and that's come up like a balloon. It's his eye straight away. You can see it's come up like an egg straight away, hasn't it? There is on Ryan King. It's closed straight away. And I'll be honest, that might be his afternoon done. He's uh, looking to fetch the ball forward now. He's well at Albert, but he's pinned and put down by a combination of Graham and High Marsh. Comes across then to Danny Addy. Trying to get himself through. Just pushes Corkle off before being wrapped up there. He's eight short of halfway. Put a worth in there at dummy half. Comes across then to Brad England. England's taken down. Five and last now. Made a short of halfway. But a worth lining weight at dummy half. Just into the 51st minute. Connor Jones. And that's going to be plenty of pressure put on there by Jay Carter. But it's going to be a fresh set of six because they couldn't get there. Could, uh, couldn't get there from the charge down. We've got a, right them got a couple of players who are in their squad who can do that. Carter does it. McCannon does it very well. Just unable to uh, pick it up there. Have... Uh, with White Devon, it means Feather got a fresh set of six. Minican left in that left hand side corner out, or left hand side, I should say, and he's trying to get his way through. Going to play this ball 35 out from the White Haven line. Gale dives from him from dummy half. Evans trying to fetch him down. Gets the ball away to Turner, and Turner is going to be wrapped up 32 metres out. 
Butterworth in it, dummy half. Only one marker, so trying to find a little bit of space there is uh, Butterworth. Can't get away, does get actually away from Hyde Marsh. That should be obstruction. Will Evans had to push the defender out the way. Referee Ryan Cox, once again, not interested. Turner then comes across to Danny Adia. It's going to be Adi to put the kick in. Isn't the best. But he's Romeo then. That should be tackled in the air. Yet again, referee Ryan Cox not interested. And Joey Romeo has been tackled three metres away from his own line. Now finds us Curtis Tia. Tia does well there, Curtis Tia. He's made nearly the 20 metre line. Urging the Featherston players onside if they're, if they're offside penalise them don't give them an opportunity just pin them but it's uh, good if actually defence there from Feverson as Owen McCadden's been pinned down Jamie Dorian in at dummy half going finds now does Jake Mason Mason's running laterally trying to find a gap and he's through that he's Jake Mason just trying to get support the support on his right hand side and finds Will Evans Evans just needs to come back inside and he has done so White the Evans 32 metres out now should be a six again referee Ryan Cox tells him to get up Gebby looking for the offload and I can see why he was trying to do it there to Dean Gebby. He's had some joy in doing that this afternoon, but just needed to keep hold of the ball there and White Devon give the turnover ball once again. Yeah, it was a nice break from Mason and Evans there. Gebby doesn't need to offload. It was the wrong play from Gebby, really, when you look at it. He's tried to scoot around and it was the wrong play and the wrong offload. So it's the first thing Gebby's done wrong all afternoon, to be fair to him. But um, yeah, White Devon, they are breaking Featherson, that's the thing. They are getting joy. It's just they've got to put uh, capitalise on the opportunities and they do break them. So Adi now comes across to Connor Jones. Just wait and see. Ryan King has come back out down below us. So comes across now to Turner. Turner's going to put the kick high. Get in, Gebby. Ooh, a little bit of a fumble there from Gebby. James Newton just looks up and down below us and he's just got a little smirk on his face. But uh, Evans is now. Right. So they just went to say there's some conversations happening and I think the doctor is saying it isn't an HIA. So, but he can't go back onto the field. It's just going to be a straight interchange, I think, here. Just waiting to see there. We'll, we'll try and keep an eye on that in the next few minutes. In the meantime, Romeo plays the ball. Comes across now to Hugh Worthington. Worthington keeps his legs pumping. He's done well there. Has the trialist. It's going to be the five and last. 42 metres away from their own line. Going to come up left to Carter. Kick's going to bounce. Bounces kindly for Gorman. Then comes across then to uh, Gaz Gale. Gale's looking for the offload, does and so in to find Gorman. It's going to be wrapped up then by Will Evans. Turner in there at dummy half, then comes across to Gaz Gale. Gale's going to be the man fetched down just short of halfway. 55th minute here on BBC Radio, Cumbria Sports Online. Haven 16, Feverson Rovers 26. As the Featherman's now just fetched down, what, three, four metres away from the Haven 40. It was Minikin. Adi now gets it back inside then to uh, Wellington Albert. Albert's going to be the man wrapped up. 32 metres out. So, right, so King's going back out there. So what they're saying is it wasn't, so the doctor's ruled that it wasn't a HIA, but because he's come off the field, he's had to use an interchange, which means he's now having to use another interchange to go back on. So White, it's a waste of two interchanges for, for Whitehaven, essentially, there, it seems like, Ash. Yeah, of course it is, George. I don't, I, I don't understand that one. Um, unless... Because surely if, he, if he's if he's past his H, if he's past his HIA, so it's not a HIA. Surely you've just got to wait the full 15 minutes and then go back out. I don't see. I'll, we'll, ask, we'll, we'll ask for clarification later on. But King is back out there now. High Marsh is the man that's left the field. As it's now McCadden look at fetching his ball forward. Hard running from the Australian. Got his first try in Whitehaven colours earlier on. Dorian in there at dummy half. Then comes across to Hugh Worthington, who's impressed me so far since he's been out on the field. He's wrapped up. It is going to be five and last. 35 metres out. Doran in there at dummy half. Coming going to across to Carter. Carter's going to put the kick in. It's right down the throat of Gorman. Just sort of held up in the wind. The White Devon defensive line is there. And Ryan King is back out there. But with only one eye, it seems like. I'll be completely honest. Because um, that had closed up immediately. Yeah, it's a strange decision to put to put um, Kingy back out there. Especially on one eye, you know. I'd have maybe left him off and left, unless High Marsh is he's blowing. But he doesn't look like he's, he's walking around here. So Butterworth nearly through the line there, just over the halfway line before being fetched down by McCarron and uh, Jake Carter. There's uh, Brett Bailey, who we still haven't seen so far yet this afternoon. He's going to be coming on to the field here, probably to replace Worthington. We'll keep an eye on that in the next 
minute or so. Adi now comes across then to Turner. Turner then back inside to Brad Day. Nearly through the line there was Brad Day. It's going to be the Rovers' fifth and last tackle here. The 22 metres out. Adi's in there at dummy half. Going to put the kick in, trying to get it over the top, but it collected very easily by Adi and Gebby. And Gebby's looking for the space, but he's going to be wrapped up eight metres away from his own line. Yeah, James Ford won't be happy with that kick from Danny Adi. It was a poor one, to be honest. A poor of his calibre. wasn't the best kick right into Gebby's hands, and he's he dealing with for Whitehaven there. Will Evans is going to be the man to play the ball. Dornan in there at dummy half. Comes across then to Hugh Worthington. This might be his last action, I think, before he's going to be uh, pulled from the field here. Brett Bailey is going to be the man to be replacing him. Dornan in there at dummy half. Going to go right into the hands of Hannigan. Hannigan now finds Will Evans. Evans looking to come back inside. It is Hugh Worthington that's going to be leaving the field here for Brett Bailey. Gebby now trying to find some space. He's the Papua New Guinean. He's through once again. Lachlan Hannigan in support. Going in Lachlan Hannigan. Lachlan Hannigan on that right hand side. Trying to use there is Hannigan. Having to come back inside. It's going to be the five and last. Ten metres out of Whitehaven. Comes across now. Mazin. Then comes across to Jamie Doran. Isn't the best pass. Now finds Ryan King. Finds Carter. Finds Ryan McCannon. Finds Curtis Tier. Curtis Tier. Forward pass. forward pass, forward pass. I don't know who to who and where from, but that Tia should have given the ball to Joey Romeo. And I think it's McCadden, the Tia, that's been real forward. But Tia, I don't think it would have got over it anyways. I don't think he was going to get that ball down. He elected to go himself. The pass should have been to Joey Romeo for what would have been his hat-trick. Tia elected to go himself. But in the meanwhile, it's all... Well, it doesn't make a difference, does it? It's all if, buts and maybes because the pass was called forward. Yeah, it's that skill. That whole thing about skill again, Jordan. That, that forward pass from... <laughs> no, that's not a penalty. Just explain, Ash. Just explain what happened. It's Guy Grimm's tackled the man and he's dropped the ball dead it's not a penalty he's saying he's knocked it out from dummy half John Ryan Cox has had a shocker there that's two now but previously I think it was McCarran's pass to Tia but dear me Ryan Cox Ryan Cox be interesting to watch that back Connor Jones is going to look put the ball into the touch isn't the best kick from Ryan Cox now to be fair I think the touch is giving him another extra two or three metres win it's going to then going to be uh, Barley to take the tap finds uh, Keenan Tomlinson Tomlinson's going to be the man that's taken down Carter and McCarran knock on it is going to be rolled a knock on on this occasion you can hear the white haven coach and stuff behind us and you, can, you can hear the shouts of there to Yeshua ref here on BBC Radio come via sports online we're just about to tick over into the hour mark the 60th minute it's Haven 16 Featherston 26 and Whitehaven they've come back from uh, deficits from this in the final 20 minutes this season they'll be looking to do the same once again and try and get their first victory over over since uh, home victory since June 2008 yeah like I say the, the, at times they've, they've broke for this and, the, and they've broke them with these John just been down the skill levels um, but you know, Ferguson are still a good side Jordan no matter what people say they are still a very very good side Jamie Dorden trying to look at breaking from dummy half you can hear the shouts of the Whitehaven coaching staff he's offside he's offside Joey Romeo's is looking to be the man that fetch the ball there Al Ryan King can say out of anything out of that eye is beyond me got to be a penalty oh no Joey Romeo real to have knocked on and the Whitehaven coaching staff yet again down below us unhappy the backroom staff and Joey Ro um, Jotty Corley and Stephen Kirkbride behind us at the back of the stand but it's going to be a scrum down head and feet here to Rovers and I think we just maybe need to try and get some calm heads out there because Whitehaven are definitely winning this game Joey Romeo I, I, I didn't see John to be honest so I can't even say if he was ripped out or he dropped it dead but you've got to be better than that as well if he has just dropped it dead you've got to be better than that with skill level again John so ball comes right into the hands of Connor Barley from the scrum McCallan's in there T is in there alongside Jake Carter Barley's going to play this ball 42 metres out Bowles is back in there to replace Reese Butterworth Addy then comes across then to just double check in Dean Roberts is now out there as well for Featherston play this ball exactly 30 out Turner now takes the line on looks to get back inside to Minikin absolute murder ball for Minikin he's done well there to be fair and he's uh, been brought down 20 metres out from this white seven line you feel another try it means all she's wrought here at the recreation ground Kimono looking to get his arm three but wrapped up by Bailey and Guy Graham comes right now bounces bounces into the hands of Gorman no knock on Gorman just trying to find a gap there nearly through nearly got past Rio Corkill but Corkill and King combine he's going to be the five and last 
Bowles is in there, it's only half goals left into the hands end of Turner, puts a little kick through, Gebby collects, but he's going to be pinned, is he, just behind his own goal line there, good defence from Featherstone and they've pinned the Papua New Guinean behind his own try line for the goal line dropout. Yeah, nice little kick there from Turner, you can you can tell he's got a bit of class about him, can't you, the, the feather scrum half, you can tell he's played in RL. But like for a little thick game, he's unfortunately he didn't get out, he tried his best, but you know, a good chase by I think it was Minikin and, and Gale that nailed him in the end. So Jack Carter is going to be the man with to put this goal line dropout in. Gets plenty of yardage on it, it's going to bounce. It's going to be well over the halfway line before bounces into the hands of Danny Addy. Doesn't want to run a breath barely, decides he wants to run at Will Evans. However, that ball's then being just lost. And Will Evans picks it up, and then that means he's going to be wrapped up 42 metres out, and it's going to be a penalty. Is it for a. a that, well, he's pointed at a Featherstone player, so it can't be for the high tackle. We'll wait and see. Yeah, descent. Yeah, they weren't happy that, that they thought that ball was ripped out. Did Fev? They weren't happy, and referee Ryan Cox has penalised him for what he said. I think Danny Addy just dropped it. Uh, to be fair, I don't think Danny Addy wanted to carry that ball. I think he was looking he for, didn't, did for he? Dean Roberts <laughs> to take that ball, but Dean Roberts just couldn't get to it. And I think it was just a fair drop, and I thought descent these days was 10 minutes in the bin. Will Evans takes the tap, then comes across to Lachlan Hannigan, finds Guy Graham. That is a high tackle, and that should be 10 minutes in the bin. He's caught him high. We'll wait and see. Scottish International on Scottish International Mr yeah. Addy and Mr Graham yes but that's, that's the third one from Danny Addy today and he hasn't spoken to him once Jordan earlier in the season Danny Addy probably sees yellow by now I'd say yeah but they're saying they've relaxed it again don't they with all the complaining people were doing so Jamie Doran likes to take the tap from the penalty Whitehaven are starting this walk 30 metres out Guy Graham gets it to 22 out here now here for Whitehaven BBC Radio Cumbria Sport Online Doran's in there at dummy half going to come left then into the hands of King finds Hannigan finds Carter going for it on player one McCannon's nearly through the line he's taken down there 12 out now at Whitehaven Jamie Doran comes across then to Carter comes across to King King shapes a dummy there does Ryan King but he's going to be wrapped up what two three meters out now to the right hand side of the post Doran in there goes right into the hands of Hannigan Hannigan steps back inside he's going to be wrapped up is the Australian only a meter out attacking the Kells end comes across then to Ryan King comes finds Carter then finds now Mason Mason then finds Curtis Tia Curtis Tia should be in Curtis Tia is in on the left hand side Whitehaven reduced the deficit once more back to six points it's Curtis Tia's just double checking it is his second try of the season and Whitehaven 20 Featherston 26 BBC Radio Cumbria Sport Online we have a game on our hands here at the Otis Rec yeah nice nice hands from Jake Mays in there nice little slip pass and a great again another great line from uh, Curtis Tia he's burst through and Gorman's trying to stop him all he can but you know Curtis is a big lad and you're not stopping him from there and again that comes on the back of good play Owen McCadden ran a great line got a quick play of the ball I thought why we were looking enough to get us back to six there because he's give two against Lockwood Hannigan for the exact same thing that Hannigan was held down for so it was unfortunate but in the end up why we end up going over with some nice play nice hands from King to Carter Carter amazing amazing nicely passing a great line from Curtis to you Whitehaven 20 Featherstone Rovers 26 we make it just over 15 minutes to go here on BBC Radio Cumbria Sports Online you can hear the Whitehaven fans on the popular side the far popular side here trying to get behind John Tegoli's side it's Jay Carter's going to come at this left footed he's got a very good conversion rate has Carter I'll be surprised if he misses this one is that going to be the commentator's curse however taking his time is the Whitehaven halfback comes at it now left footed Oh, I've put the curse on him. I'm so sorry, Jay Carter. Slides it to the right hand side post. It's Whitehaven 20, Feverston 26. I think Jake's tried to overcompensate for that win, Jordan. It seemed to have died down them when he was kicking, but I think he's tried to overcompensate for it and he's pushed it wide. Um, it's unfortunate miss for Jake. Like I say, he's got a good, a good record with his boot, but he's missed two today, so you know, we go again and it's been a really good game this Jordan I can't deny it. it's been really good it's exactly what Championship Rugby League is all about you, you see this and we say this that the Championship is probably the most competitive of the three divisions and we're seeing it out there this afternoon Kickoff's going to come Carter oh the shouts have let it go and I think it might have just just landed in the field of play so Carter had to take it and Brett Burley's the man to fetch it forward he's wrapped up what 11 metres away from his own line Jamie Dornan in there at dummy half comes across then to Owen McCarran I keep going to say Tom Wilkinson because in when it's the sun just shining on that with the new haircut I keep going to although with that McCarran plays the ball finds now Ryan King Guy Graham 
trying to spin out the tackle was the Scottish international Day and Adia the man involved in that tackle finds King once again does Jamie Doran he's going to play this what 35 out from his own line Doran in there scoots from dummy half is that going to be called high called on his shoulder gets the offload away to King King nearly through there after throwing the dummy it is the five and last just short of halfway Jamie Doran's going to put the kick in from dummy half and try and split the full back and the winger bounces kindly however for Gorman and the chase is there from Whitehaven nearly through however is Gorman and it's uh, tackle completed by Hannigan and Brett Bailey yeah uh, a nice kick there from uh, Jamie Doran on dummy half split Gorman and uh, Gareth Gale and then Featherston just getting on the getting a bit of a roll in here with Gale and then now Minikin carting in good defence though Ryan King was on his own she's there as well looks looks like he's absolutely shattered King to be fair McCallan and came affect that tackle Jones is going to come and then put a pop up ball across for Caden Tomlinson Tomlinson that is yeah he just it, it's poor from Whitehaven and they didn't need to do that he's just given an opportunity for Tomlinson to go over but it is going to be a penalty here for Featherston yeah Brett Bailey's tipped his legs there now that one that is a penalty. That is a penalty. That is a penalty. We, we, we will admit that's a penalty, that one. But the one in the first half, no, but that one, yeah. Um, silly one from Brett Bailey, and like you say, it's a leg up for first and they don't need, you know, and let's see if I even can hold them off for this set of six. So Jones finds touch, Wing he's going to collect the ball and pass it inside to Barley, who then takes the tap and Lex to go himself. Good hit there from Jake Carter, but needs the help of Curtis Tier and Oh, McCannon who coming to help him. Fev less than 20 metres out now. Bows in there at dummy half. Going to come left then across to Connor Jones. Jones steps, goes right, steps left, and just wrapped up by Guy Graham there is Jones. Bows in there at dummy half. Going to go left into the hands of Danny Addy. Addy runs it and then finds Kimono. Kimono's then going to be the man to take, be taken down. 10 metres out now. Knock on! Ryan King call for it from Ryan Cox not happy with the decision is Kimono just throws the ball down but it's going to be a scrum down head and feet here to Whitehaven but they're going to have to go 90 metres to get anything from this set yeah they are John but a great defensive tackle there from Brett Bailey and Ryan King they put a real shot on Kimono there and he just dropped it dead at the play of the ball King of your it right away um, so I'm surprised he can see it to be fair with the state of that eye but he did and he's called for it yeah, yeah, like you say though, the White haven't been punished there for a penalty, so they've worked hard for Brett Bailey for, for for a minute there, and it's a great tackle, great tackle. Just checking down below, as we can see, both teams still have two interchanges left, 11 minutes to go. James Newton hasn't re-entered the field. Will he do so? Let's see and wait and see. Dorian in there, a dummy half on this occasion. Now finds a Dean Gabby. Gabby's nearly through again. Finds the upload. That was forward. That was forward. White haven't have got a one with one there. It was a good yard forward as yeah. well, Jordan. Jamie Doran in there at dummy half goes right to Rio Corkill. There's no one on the outside of Corkill because that's where Gabby should be. But Corkill's going to be wrapped up just short of the halfway line. Now finds Jake Mason, finds then Guy Graham. Graham then does well there, does a Scottish international. Frowns on his front, however. White Devon calling for the six again, especially the popular side, fearful. Goes right now into the hands of Hannigan. Hannigan throws the dummy on, nearly through there. Good defence. Turn is involved alongside Dean Roberts. It's the five and last. White Devon at 22 metres out. Dordan's in there at dummy half. He likes to go down the short side. Corkill's going to put the kick in. Gorman's there. Going to have to try and put some pressure on him. Probably not the best last play option and probably should have come inside left. Yeah, yeah. Jammer's obviously seen some at short side and he's played what he's seen, eyes up, but. Uh, it was, uh, oh, ooh, I think Gareth Gales raised his elbow in that tackle. Then. Yeah, Guy Graham called for it straight away that the elbow was raised. <laughs> Calls for knockout behind us. That is the White Devon coaching staff appealing for that, and they're not getting anything from Ryan Cox at the minute. There's some great shots going in here. This is what Championship Rugby League is all about, and we're bringing it to you live on BBC Radio, Brett, Cumbria Sports Online. Brett Bailey has absolutely He's creamed him. Connor win there. He's he is. creamed him as Brett Bailey it was a fantastic shot we make it 9 minutes 40 to go on this Sunday afternoon here in West Cumbria it's Whitehaven 20 Featherston 26 and as I said earlier this is what Championship Rugby League is all about it is and that was a, like, that was a monstrous hit from Brett Bailey he, he, he took kind of win there and Brett's a big lad for 20 year old he's a big lad he's hurt him but going back to that last play it probably ended up in the wrong man's hands it? Rio Cork who's not a known kicker to the club and Gorman's tracked over Coyd but then why haven't they put some great defensive shots in there you can see Brett Bailey trying to get the team going now referee Ryan Cox I think just having a word and saying it's getting a little bit feisty out here let's just try and calm it down a little bit but I understand why he might be having them words but this is what rugby league's all about it's about them big hits it's about them shots it's about aggression 
Connor wins no good here for Edison. Paul Turner looking to go for the 40 20. Amazing has got back and he's got plenty of wing. Yeah, Connor Wynn is absolutely no good. Pass isn't the best bounces into the hands of Joey Romeo but I think Mason had spotted that Wim wasn't back and wanted to try and get Romeo on his way Ross Ainley's getting ready to come back on the field down below us as uh, Feverson have made a change I think Brad England's gone back out to replace Dean Roberts Curtis Tia is now the man to fetch his ball forward trying to spin in the tackle there is Curtis Tia Guy Graham I'm not surprised about that one I thought Guy wanted my Curtis Tia judged to have knocked on not happy with that is Curtis Tia I was looking over here, Ash, did you see what went on there? Curtis has went to get up and play the ball, he's been pushed down and then the ball's, Curtis has tried to play the ball, that's all he's trying to do, he's been pushed down, he's given a knock on. Well, you can hear what the crowd around us think about it here, at the recreation ground. I think that's three harsh calls against Whitehaven now, Jordan. Don't get me wrong, they got away with one before with a forward pass, but it, yeah, it hasn't it's, even itself out yet. Yeah, it hasn't even itself out yet, it is, they all say, it's, it's, it's all swings and roundabouts, what, what may go to you, may come elsewhere, but not happy with what they've seen from Mr Cox so far this afternoon Ah, uh, Whitehaven scrum goes ball goes left into the hands of Gorman Gorman is wrapped up Hannigan and Will Evans and he's moved the metre forward to play the ball now into the hands of Brad Day Day's then going to be the man that's wrapped up right he's either got off the ball to play the mark or it's a penalty neither cuff off coming from referee Ryan Cox Brad England is now the man to play this ball well he will do he's just been wrapped up combination of Bailey King and McCarron, Jones, looking to step back inside, does get back inside, and McCarron, don't say that all too often, but McCarron had just got back in the defensive line, good defensive effort there from King, Addy, then comes to come now to Turner, Turner, then comes across to Gorman, now comes across to Minikin, Minikin looking to go, fantastic effort, oh, referee Ryan Cox, I understand why, I do actually, I do, but, that's a good tackle to me, it ju it, I just, it's not it's not a shoulder it's going to be ruled a shoulder charge because he hasn't used his arms he's gone on and he's pushed him just like i've done you know he's got his arms crossed and he's pushed him and because there's no arms involved it's 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 classed as a shoulder charge i don't think he could be in trouble here i'm not actually joking he's, he's discussing this as if adeni has got to be in trouble ten minutes he's gone for 10 minutes Wow. Oh, wow, 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 wow. I don't like that. I don't. Ryan Cox. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Whitehaven down to 10 men for the rest of this. And Dean Gebby has seen yellow for what will be classed as a shoulder charge. And Feather going to elect to go for goal. I don't blame them because they've been in a hell of a game here at the recreation ground. And they just want to make it where it's going to be a two score game. Dear, dear, dear. Mr. Cox. He has not exactly covered himself in glory today six penalties apiece most of them have been controversial to say the least but Gorman's going to have an opportunity here to try and tag on an extra two points just to try and give Fev that extra bit of breathing space here in West Cumbria this afternoon referee Ryan Cox is all now too interested in telling the Whitehaven players exactly where he can stand in the nicest way possible get a grip <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He's, they're 20 metres away and he's telling that you need to go back onto the try line. Well, in that case, Danny Addy's offside. Well, Danny Addy's in front of the kicking tee. Wait and see here. Gorman. Like I said, Dean Gebby getting applauded by the White Devon faithful to our right hand side. Gorman comes at it right footed. Goes over, gives Feverson the eight point advantage they so desperately wanted. We make it 5 minutes 40 to go here on BBC Radio Cumbria Sports Online. It is Whitehaven 20, Feverston 28. I imagine that um, what they'll do here, Whitehaven for a, a bit of a reshuffle, King will maybe go to the back row, Cork at the centre, and Will Evans onto the wings. I imagine that's what they'll do, uh, just to try and even that space out that side. You'd imagine Whitehaven are going to elect to go short here. Are they? No, he hasn't yet. They're trying to use the wind. Jamie Dornan, of all people, could be the man to get there first. He knocks it backwards. Mason's going to get there. Whitehaven have the ball. Mason. Through the line there is Jake Mason. Whitehaven haven't given up as of yet. 20 metres out. Dornan in there. Ross Haney now, man, with ball in hand. 50, well, 18 metres out. Dornan in there. Finds then, takes the dummy, now finds Jake Carter, taking off the ball there, should be a penalty, should be a penalty, is a penalty. Do you go for two, reduce Ash? Do you go for two, reduce the deficit? I'd roll on, roll on. 
roll on <laughs> Johnny Gawley's going I don't know what you want me to do uh, Kevin Heverett I think was the man initially that then just made a decision just roll on Jamie Dolan takes the tap Brett Bailey there's a big man there he's Brett Bailey that's a penalty that should be a that penalty. Is a penalty Jamie Dolan in there that dummy half going to go left into the hands of Carter Carter steps back inside that's called high so that Carter? should be yes and now calling for 10 minutes on the white day and fearful and you can hear the shouts where's the yellow card Dolan takes a tap Brett Bailey once again BBC Radio Cumbria Sports Online we make it four minutes to go Whitehaven eight points down but are only two metres out Dolan's in there at dummy half going to come across to Carter to Mason Mason across to Joby Romeo Romeo's looking to come back inside it's going to take some stopping there to put them in the touch and Whitehaven are forcing the touch through Joby Romeo and I think that could be all she wrote Ryan King was taking off the ball on the outplay nothing in it I don't think I think he just sort of running to a Featherstone player but that could be the final opportunity here yeah, for Whitehaven. I think that was the wrong play, Jordan. He, we had, we should have been back to the middle. We had something set up on the right with uh, Ross Ainley and uh, Lachlan Hannigan. So maybe the wrong play from Jake Mason. We make it three minutes to go, and of course, he's not a scrum these days. It's a play of the ball which takes Whitehaven another opportunity to push at the scrum, for an example. Gale's now on the man to fetch it forward. It's just going to be game management here from Fev, just up the jumper time. They'll know they've been a game when they go back to West Yorkshire. But Gorman is going to be the man that's tackled, wrapped up now. Evans and uh, Hannigan involved, 22 metres away from their own line here. Minikin now. Bailey's involved in that tackle. Ross Ainley is involved alongside Jamie Doran. Gorman's going to try and scoot from dummy half, and he has done. He's done well there, to be fair. So, I know it's Harry Bowles, my apologies, but he's been... Fetch down 12 short of halfway, looking to go for a 40-20 here. Gone behind his own man, the Jones, then gets it across to Albert. Albert then gets it across back to England. And it's going to be a rush kick. And probably a little bit better than what it should have been. It's going to be a turnover ball here. That was a bit of panic from first, and I don't know why. They're eight points up. It was just yeah, up to panic. yeah, it was up to panic. It was well and Albert, it was it was the panic really. Every, well, the right, every single one of them is in front of Ryan Cox on this right hand side and he hasn't even looked up Mason comes across to Hannigan Hannigan nearly through there Brett Burley's going to be the man why does he want the extra pivot? James Newton's out there in the final minutes six again that's why I don't like it six again that should be a penalty you give Whitehaven an opportunity to boot it down the field Ainley Newton Jamie Doran Carter comes across then to Owen McCarran good tackle there from the Fev, from, from Fev, who was it that was in there? It was King Tomlinson. Newton goes right into the hands of King. King holds off one, holds off two. There's a gap opening up. There's a gap opening up. Finds Will Evans on that right hand side. Finds Will Evans on that right hand side. Finds Will Evans on that right hand side. Fantastic work from the Welsh international. It's his second try of the season. Whitehaven are out of this game. It's Whitehaven 24. It's Featherston 28. Jay Carter with the kick to reduce it to two points. Now, if I was Jack, I wouldn't, I would, wouldn't bother with this kick, Jordan. Just get it down as quick as you can. Get a kick and get back. That was a brilliant, it was just that, I think that play was just made up. Ryan King has ran about 30 metres across field, bumped four players off, dumped into 11's hand, who's fended Gareth Gale off, which you don't see often you again. Don't, yet again, we said you don't say that about, and about then Gareth Gale. Then he just ran over the top of Louis Gorman and put it down. Jake Carter from the touchline, 20 metres, a metre in. We make it 30 seconds to go. Carter comes. Jake Carter! Jake Carter! No, the door! Oh, no, no, no! One went to give it, one didn't. They did not know what they to give didn't they know. The other. touch judges did not know. One went to give it, the other didn't. Eventually, it's real that they haven't given it. It's Whitehaven 24, it's Featherston 28, and oh my God, drama here on BBC Radio Cumbria Sport Online. The, the officials have not covered themselves in glory today, Jordan, to say the least. They didn't have a, actually, they didn't have a clue. They, they did not them. have a clue. One went to give it, the other didn't. What, the one with the red flag went to give it, the yellow flag looked at him, he looked back at him and they both went, oh no. That is 
not not good. I think Mr. Gareth Hewer may be getting a few complaints. I today. think he might be getting a few complaints, and I reckon the match officials department will be getting a few complaints. Gorman, I don't know how long's left. I'll be honest. Within the hands, Jamie Doran runs it lateral, gets it away to Hannigan. We're in the hands of the timekeeper. Hasn't got his hand on the hooter yet. Has got a fewer. Comes across then. Newton gets the offload. He hits the floor. Back into the hands. It can't be a knock on. It can't be a knock on. He's back into his own hands. Reverend Ryan Cox went to give a knock on there. Jamie Doran. Out the back to Carter. Out the back to Mason. Mason had to reach for it. Six again. Six again. It comes off a Featherston man. His hands on the hooter. Do I even get the play of the ball in? They don't. It's full time here at the recreation ground. And Wysaven can feel so hard done by. They've had some decisions that haven't gone their way this afternoon here at the recreation ground. 